Hello, I'm Who Are We, and on today's episode of The Cutting Edge, we're going to be talking about the prefrontal cortex. So the prefrontal cortex, or the PFC, is arguably the most advanced and evolutionary significant region of the human brain. It plays a crucial role in executive functions, decision making, social cognition, and emotional regulation. This lecture will explore the anatomy, functional specialization, developmental trajectory, neural circuitry, associated disorders, and contemporary research on the prefrontal cortex. The PFC is in the anterior portion of the frontal lobe, comprising several distinct subregions with specialized functions. Broadly, it is divided into a the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, or DLPFC. It's located in the middle frontal gyrus. It's crucial for working memory, cognitive flexibility, abstract reasoning and planning. It's strongly connected to the posterior parietal region and the basal ganglia. We also have the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, which is the VMPFC. It interacts with the limbic system, including the amygdala and the hippocampus. It's key in emotional regulation, value-based decision-making and social behavior. Damage can lead to emotional blunting and poor risk assessment. We have the orbital frontal cortex as well, the OFC. It's situated just above the orbits of the eyes. It's responsible for reward processing, impulse control, and adaptive learning. Dysfunction in the OFC is linked to obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, and addiction. Next, we have the anterior cingulate cortex, or the ACC. It plays a role in error detection, conflict monitoring, and motivation. It's strongly involved with attention regulation and emotional processing. Functional specialization of the prefrontal cortex. Executive functions, working memory, holding and manipulating information over short periods in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Cognitive control, inhibiting automatic responses in favor of goal-directed actions. Decision-making, evaluating potential rewards and risks. Social cognition, this includes theory of mind, TOM, it's understanding others' mental states and intentions. And it is one of the heuristics that a lot of psychologists use to diagnose things such as autism. It's um, a whole thing that I believe you should go into. There's many uh, pioneering experiments based on theory of mind. And it is debated. There's other, um, obviously, there's a lot more to autism than just theory of mind. It's one of the main heuristics that was pioneered for it, though. Next, we have moral reasoning. It's weighing ethical decisions, and that is processed in the ventral medial prefrontal cortex. We have social norms, learning and adapting behavior based on societal expectations. We also have emotional regulation. The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex interacts with the amygdala to modulate fear responses whereas the ventral medial prefrontal cortex regulates impuls impulsivity and emotional responses. And one of the key words there is obviously modulate and regulate are um, distinct, so I would keep that in mind in that prior sentence. Language and abstract thinking. The prefrontal cortex contributes to complex linguistic constructs reasoning, and metaphor comprehension. Developmental trajectory of the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is one of the last brain regions to mature, with full development occurring in mid-20s. Synaptic pruning and myelination refine its efficiency throughout adolescence. Adolescence prefrontal cortex immaturity explains increased impulsivity and risk-taking, as well as addiction and there's a lot of other things. It's actually one of the things is um, the reverse Flynn effect. So we're wondering, obviously the white matter and there's less um, activity in this prefrontal cortex than there should be. And there's maturity going on that shouldn't be going on. That's a whole entire thing that is worth looking into. There's a lot of things. Is it from screens? Is it from social media? Is it from, you know, the different diet that we're having? Is it from the pace that we're having at life? There's there's lots of things. Um, obviously, you have stuff with the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, that people are questioning with that. 
it's worth going into. It's very interesting. I love that field. Um, neural circuits of the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex forms complex networks with various brain regions. The corticostriatal circuit connects to the prefrontal cortex to the basal ganglia, regulating goal-directed behavior and habit formation. The corticolimbic circuit. So obviously, if you're not in this field, whenever you see a word, it's it's very simple. Corticolimbic. Cortical and the limbic regions are linked, so it's very easy to um, distinguish what most of these mean, but that's how you do it. It's very simple. So this links the prefrontal cortex with the amygdala and the hippocampus controlling emotion and memory integration. The corticopontine circuit connects the prefrontal cortex to the cerebellum, influencing motor planning and cognitive flexibili flexibility. Disorders associated with the prefrontal cortex. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. Reduced activation in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex leads to poor impulse control and working memory de deficits. Schizophrenia. Hypofrontality, reduced prefrontal activity, not hyperfrontality, which is a weird distinction, but yeah, actually leads to an entirely different thing. Is So, hypofrontality is linked to disorganized thinking and impaired executive function. Depression. Dysfunctional ventromedial prefrontal cortex and anterior cingulate cortex activity contributes to rumination and emotional dysregulation. Addiction and impulse control disorders. Orbital frontal cortex dysfunction impairs reward processing leading to compulsive behaviors. Contemporary research on the prefrontal cortex Neuroimaging advancements, stuff as fMRI and DTI, which is um, functional magnetic resonance imaging and diffusion tensor imaging, are revealing new insights into the prefrontal cortex connectivity. Artificial intelligence AI models, stimulating prefrontal cortex function to improve decision-making models. So neuromodulation therapies, deep brain stimulation, DBS, and transcranial magnetic stimulation, TMS, are used for treating psychiatric disorders. And there's a lot of very interesting research into that stuff um, that is worth going into um, if you want to go on like PubMed or wherever you want to search it up. Um, obviously, I would look through the actual experiments yourself if you can. Maybe even a textbook if you can find that. Cognitive, neuroscience, whatever you want. There's so much in those um, fields that's coming out especially when you look at uh, treatments for like schizophrenia and stuff and which and uh, not even just schizophrenia sorry um, Parkinson's dementia all of those you know memory disorders a lot in that that's with those two um, deep brain stimulation and transcranial magnetic stimulation it's very interesting we also have psychedelic research, exploring how substances like psilocybin modulate PFC limbic interactions. Which is obviously a booming field right now. The prefrontal cortex is the cornerstone of human cognition, governing decision-making, self-regulation, and complex thought. Understanding its function and dysfunction is crucial for both neuroscience and psychology. Ongoing research continues to uncover its intricate mechanisms holding promise for treating neuropsychiatric disorders. Key takeaways. The prefrontal cortex is central to executive function, decision-making, and social cognition. It matures late, contributing to adolescent impulsivity. Dysfunction in the prefrontal cortex is linked to schizophrenia, ADHD, addiction, and depression. Emerging research is uncovering new therapeutic interventions for PFC-related disorders. So thank you. If there's any questions, if there's any discussion or commentary, or if anyone sees any research or, you know, just wants to put it down, obviously put in the comments. Um, I love when anyone comments. I really appreciate it. It does motivate me. So thank you to everyone. And thank you for listening.